but I, I want to read a few verses of scripture to set foundation uh, here. I'm going to read just a few out of Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1, if you can go there with me, I'm going to start in verse 7 and go to verse 11. I'm sure this is familiar to many of you, if not most of you, but wanting to set the stage in which I want to build the word on today. Let's look at Exodus chapter 1, verse 7. It says, The children of Israel were fruitful, and they increased abundantly and multiplied, and they waxed exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. But verse 8 says, there arose a new king, a new Pharaoh, over Egypt, which did not know Joseph. That would be significant. And he said to the people, because the children of Israel are becoming more mighty than we are, greater in number, let's deal with them, lest they continue to multiply. And it comes to pass, when there falls out a war, they will join our enemies, fight against us, and get themselves out of the land. Therefore, verse 11, they did set over them taskmasters taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasured cities. Many of you are familiar with the biblical figure, the biblical character, Joseph. Shake your head at me if you're familiar with Joseph. He is a young man whose father favored him and loved him greatly. His father bought him a coat of many colors as a way to indicate that love and that favor. And that great love and that great favor that was a blessing was also a little bit of a thing for him because that love that his dad had for him caused his brothers to be jealous of him to the point where they hated him, to the point where they wanted to kill him, but they settled instead for selling him as a slave. But when the favor of God is on your life, the favor of God is on your life. And he goes from being a slave in Potiphar's house to the second most powerful man until a false accusation ends him up in prison. But I think I just told you, but when favor's on you, the favor's on you. He goes from the prison to the palace as a result of interpreting the dreams of Pharaoh, and he becomes the second most powerful man in all of Egypt. But here in Exodus chapter 1, I do feel like preaching here to, 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 to you today, Great Life, because this is the point that I believe God has sent me here to reveal to you. In Exodus chapter 1, this Joseph is dead, and this Pharaoh that knew Joseph, was dead. And a new Pharaoh has been put into power that did not know Joseph. Watch this in here with the spirit. This Pharaoh did not recognize Joseph. He did not recognize the people of God. And he did not recognize the favor that was to rest on the people of God. Nor did he recognize the place, I'm about to preach, that the people of God had in that land. Now, what I want to say to you today, I want to approach this carefully because I'm not talking flesh and blood. I'm talking principality. I'm talking spirit. Because there is a spirit that has been loosed in our nation. And I'm going to preach to you this morning. It is a spirit that no longer recognizes Joseph. It is a spirit, pastor, that is seeking power. Let me break this down for you. Governmental seats. Mm, positions of authority in churches. Board seats of corporations, ownerships of businesses. And as I said, it is a spirit that no longer recognizes Joseph. It does not recognize the people of God, the favor that's to rest on the people of God. And it don't recognize the place that the people of God have in this land. In other words, the only reason this nation has been blessed, is blessed, and will continue to be blessed is because of the church of Jesus Christ. It's a spirit. Oh, I'm coming in for this now. It's a spirit. And I'm going to identify its name. It is the spirit of Antichrist. I'm not saying it is the Antichrist. I'm saying it is the spirit of Antichrist that is trying to afflict the church with cruel bondage. A mask. Shut your doors. Don't you meet. Back down when we should rise up. Be quiet when you should be roaring. I came to tell you that for every spirit of hell, there is a greater spirit called the Holy Spirit. And that spirit is moving. That spirit is breathing. That spirit is blowing. I need to know if I'm in the right kind of church. Oh, I need to know if I'm in the right kind of place today. Spirit. It's a spirit of Antichrist. 
that says the most relevant power on earth is not mandatory or necessary. The devil is a liar. I came to declare and decree today that when the enemy comes in like a flood, God shall raise up a standard against it. And there's a fresh anointing coming on you today. And a fresh anointing coming on those of you watching today. I need you to take 30 seconds, get up on your feet, clap and shout like you believe there's a greater spirit. There's a greater power, yeah? greater anointing, greater power, greater spirit. It is a spirit that says if we can close the doors of churches temporarily, we can shut the church itself down permanently. It's a spirit that says if they can't meet, they won't multiply. Am I okay? Can I help you? Can I help you? You can tell how scared the devil is of the church by the level of persecution he brings against it. And by that standard, you ought to jump up and shout because that's good news. Hell is scared. Hell is angry. Hell is on the run, which means the church is on the move. Shout like you believe it. Listen, it's an afternoon session. You can't get wild at 2 o'clock. <laughs> Behave yourself. Or I'll send you out to get a chicken sandwich you saw on the screen. I said, Pastor Steve, you can't put chicken sandwiches up on the stage before you introduce the preacher. He said, about chicken sandwiches. Now, can I get into my message? That don't mean I'm going to be long. It just means I want to get into my message. A verse that I held out on purpose. Exodus chapter 1, verse 12. I stopped at verse 11. Because verse 12 tells us that the more Pharaoh persecuted, y'all you know, know the Bible, you wouldn't be in an afternoon session. The more he persecuted them, the more they multiplied and increased. So this is similar, right, to what we see in the book of Acts. Multiplication, favor, financial prosperity, Holy Ghost being poured out. Extreme persecution. Watch this, a parallel. Persecution, prosperity. The more they were persecuted, the more they prospered. So hold on, I'm about to, I'm about to, I don't know what I'm about to do. Persecution, prosperity. Why would God allow them as he is now? This parallel. It kept the church pure to its message. And it kept them dependent on this third forgotten and too often unmentionable person of God called the Holy Spirit. The devil done messed up. Y'all don't get it. He messed, no, like for real, messed up. No, no, no. Because in the midst of COVID and racism and all this political confusion, there is a generation of men and women that have been rising up. Oh, we're coming from the back of the walls. We're coming from the side. You don't know even who we are, but we're not going away. We're a generation with a boldness and a courage that no generation has ever had before. We got a bigger mouth than any generation has ever had before. And the church is getting ready to roar again. You better do it online. I want to hear you roar. Can I take you a little bit further? 
This, this is all going to tie together, I promise, because it's a good afternoon session. Tie this together. In Joshua 3, verse 8, you don't have to turn there. The priests are instructed by God. Israel's getting ready to cross the Jordan River. And the priests are instructed, when you get to the edge of the water, carrying the ark, stand still. It's a hard thing sometimes for people to do. Stand still. Most of you know that in the Old Testament, God chose to house his presence in this box called the Ark of the Covenant. Right? That's how he chose to manifest himself. Well, now he chooses to house himself in this person called the Holy Spirit. This unmentionable third person of God. That's how he chooses to manifest and distribute his presence. And maybe you're not shouting because you don't realize that that Holy Spirit I'm talking about lives in you. There you go. We house him. There is no ark. You are the ark. Don't you know you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? But here's what amazes me, great life, that whether it is through this person called the Holy Spirit or that box called the Ark of the Covenant, God has always desired your involvement in carrying his presence. This is, this is what we see in Joshua with these priests whose sole responsibility it was to carry this ark. They had to carry and manage and steward the presence of God. And that concept was so critical in the story, the progression of Joshua's story, and ultimately the outcome because this, hmm, just hear this church today, because if Israel were to ever experience a supernatural crossing, there was only one way for them to do it. Not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Watch this. As the priests carried the ark and stepped into the water, what they were doing was they were introducing presence to their river. <sighs> presence to their resistance, their obstacle. The thing that was keeping them from crossing into what God had for them. And if America is to ever have a crossing, if you individually in your life are to ever to have a crossing, there is only one way to do it. It ain't by might nor by power. It is by the Spirit. There will have to be a people still carrying His presence. And if we've ever needed a crossing in our nation, it is now. If we've ever needed hope, it is now. If we've ever needed change, it is now. If we've ever needed revival, a wave of repentance, a sweet pulpit to the pew, it's now. But if there's ever going to be a crossing, there's got to be a Holy Ghost baptized with fire church that knows how to introduce presence. Okay? Got to introduce presence. Not more smoke and lights, although you have beautiful smoke and lights. I got smoke and lights, but we need power. And I just, I want to take a minute and go old school here. I, I want to know, does anybody, we got some people that are young, some people that are not as young. That's how we'll say it. Let me just, let me just do a little temperature check. Does anybody else remember days that people chose the church they were going to attend based on presence? Not, not on Google reviews, but on presence? Well, they were a five and a half star rating. Presence! Not on proximity from your front door. Presence. Not how many. And bicep selfies the preacher can post. Presence. Not, not how many connect groups you can sign up for but never attend. Presence. Does anybody remember those days? 
Well, for every spirit that would say, preach and be quiet, those days are gone. I tell you, the devil is a liar. Because there's men and women in this room today, and there's men and women watching. That's all we want is presence. That's why we're here. That's why we came. That's why we won't stop until we see revival. Because all we want is... You better let hell know it. Let heaven know it. Let COVID know it. Let racism know it. All we want is... Take 30 seconds and praise him crazy, praise. That's all we want. If you want to know where I'm at in my outline, I'm rounding third base. It means I'm coming close to closing. But I have to leave you with this, and then we're going to really shout and go get a chicken salad sandwich. <laughs> I have to address what I believe is a fundamental issue. These priests in Joshua were told not just to carry the ark, but where to carry it, what to do with it when they got there. Carry it to the edge of the water. When you get there, stand still. Pastor Steve, you will know this. Many of you here will probably know it as well. The actual weight of the Ark of the Covenant was approximately 615 pounds. That is not light. <laughs> Hear me. It wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> because presence isn't light it's heavy it's it's weighty it was weighty then and it's waiting now that's why slick preachers don't want to carry it because it's easier to carry sexy than it is spirit no 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 this weight is heavy the requirement, the responsibility, the criticism, the controversy. I'd be easier to build your social media following without it. It's going to cost you something. Its presence is weighty. Just the weight of the ark alone would have made carrying it a challenge. Taking you deeper. But they were facing additional challenges as they were crossing the Jordan River. The Jordan River was flooded, and some research suggests that the river's currents were racing between 15 to 20 miles per hour. So you are carrying a 615-pound box on your shoulders, standing in mud, while 15-mile-per-hour water races by you. What I'm trying to tell you is it would have been hard enough to carry that ark without additional challenges. It would have been hard enough to stand, let alone stand stable. Yeah. And they had to do this all while carrying and managing and stewarding the blessed presence of God. If you're not in this building, or if you're not hearing me, you're not in this building. Because this is the challenge that we face today. That God is looking for men and women that know not only how to stand, but how to stand stable in unstable times. How to stand during turbulent times while those rivers of racism are rushing by and rivers of COVID are racing by and rivers of fear are racing by. Fear over the economy, fear over the election, fear over the pandemic and God's saying, I'm just trying to find a group of people that know how to... Herein, be seated, I'm closing, I promise. I'm between third base and home. Herein lies our problem. I don't say this to be critical. I say it to be accurate. There are not enough pastors and ministers that even carry the ark, let alone know how to manage it in times of crisis. I'm not being critical. I'm being accurate. 
There's too many men and women of God that become unstable in unstable times. I have never seen so many preachers who need counseling. Up one day, down the next. They don't know what they're saying. They're unstable. They're backing down when they should rise up. They're remaining silent when they should be roaring. This ain't no joke because we're standing in a time. We're standing for the truth is as unpopular as it ever has been. They will label you for it. They'll shame you for it. They'll cancel you for it. We're carrying all of this. And at the same time, he says, don't mismanage the glory. What if today God would use this moment, those gathered in this room and those watching online, to be a prophetic announcement that there's a generation of men and women rising up that are not only going to carry the ark, but we're going to manage it and steward it well. What if God used your praise over the next five minutes to make an announcement that there's a generation of men and women that are going to stand stable in unstable times, that are going to stand during turbulent times, and we're going to manage and balance and carry this ark, and we're going to keep ourselves pure. We're going to keep ourselves holy, but we're going to see holy fire fall while we do it. I need to know, is there a people in this place today that will take 30 seconds and give God praise and make that announcement? men and women rising up all over this room everyone watching I'm telling you you're going to be a carrier of the glory a carrier of the presence and I don't care what obstacles and resistance come against you young people, old people this ark, this presence it's all we got I don't care if you got baggy jeans or skinny jeans you got to have an ark I don't care if you young or old but you got to have an ark I don't care if it's fluorescent lights or LED lights you got to have an ark and I need to know today, is there a generation in this place that wants to carry the glory? Come on, give them 60 seconds of praise. I'm about done. Give them some praise. Give them some glory. speak prophetically 2020 I didn't travel very much but where I did travel was significant Nashville 4,000 people over three nights flooded a tent a minimum of 100,000 people watching online replicated something similar in Orlando just a few weeks ago Pastor, I'm making this announcement anytime I can, anywhere I can. Revival's not coming. Look, y'all, it's here. We got this. Yeah. I mean, you can't, can't get too deep with that one. It's just. But growing up in church, I've sung all the songs, I've prayed all the prayers. And we had weekends where we pray for revival. As a kid, I just turned 41, by the way, last week. Praise the Lord for the 20-year-olds who are happy. Because the rest of y'all like, ooh. <laughs> I grew up hearing about revival, preaching about it, hearing pre it preached. We sang about it. We prayed over it. Two things. What is revival? Is it a gathering of people? Is it a bunch of people getting saved? Those are things that happen in revival. But revival... It's so simple to understand, but so many people miss it. It's Ezekiel 37. That's what revival is. Ezekiel is placed in a valley of dry bones that belonged to an army that had been badly defeated and beaten. Their bodies left to rot and decompose. Representing the nation of Israel, the people of God, and the Spirit of the Lord catches him, takes him up and brings him into this valley asks him this question that our generation is being faced with today. Can these bones live? 
Well, Lord, you know. Watch what he said. Then you prophesy and speak to those bones. The wind of my spirit would blow and I would assemble them and breathe breath into their dead bodies, raise them, bring them back to life. What is revival? It's simply this. When everything that you think is dead comes to life again. That's all it is. It's just, it's just a fundamental dreams, destinies, visions, plans, purposes, ministries, measures, mantles, gifts, talents, calls, anointings, families, marriages, businesses, jobs. All that stuff you say is dead comes to life again. That's what revival is. Now, how does it come? Son of man, can these bones live, Lord, you know? Then you speak. Watch this. God does not send revival. We speak revival. We declare and we decree your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So I came to take my size 10 foot and kick the door of the devil down and let him know today revival's not coming, it is here. We speak to our marriages, we speak to our money, we speak to our bodies and our mind, and we say live again. We speak to our government, live again. We speak to our economy, live again. We declare a decree, revival is not coming, it is here. You better shout like you believe it. Oh, you better shout like you believe it. Oh, no, no, no. Lean into that moment. Lean into that moment. Clap and praise him because life is coming to your family. Life is coming to your business. Life is coming to your ministry. I'm prophesying over you and then I'm leaving. If you take my seat, but I got to prophesy this over you to those in ministry that are here and those that are watching. I have a word, and then I got a word for this house. Same story I'm referring to, just further in its progression. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Joshua 4, verse 10 says the priest, this is during the actual crossing, that the priest stood in the water until everything was finished and the people hurried up and passed over. I want to release right now prophetically a finishing anointing on the fivefold ministry that may be represented here today and watching. Pastors, prophets, teachers, apostles, evangelists, you will finish what you started. The vision, the dream, I don't care if it's paving a parking lot or building a building. You're going to finish it. You're going to finish it. Now I prophesy an anointing of acceleration to hit the life of every person at the sound of my voice. The priest, watch this. They stood still till it was finished. But the people hurried up and got over to the other side. I came to declare there's an anointing of acceleration hitting your life, your mind, your body, your marriage, your health. I prophesy you will do in a day what it should take you 10 years to do. And you will accomplish in a year what it would take others a lifetime to accomplish. I declare it's time for you to run again. It's time for you to run again. There is an anointing of acceleration coming upon you. Jump for it. Shout for it. Wave for it. Spin for it. Give him your I cannot believe you use the word nuclear. I was going to see Pastor Rayleigh this morning, but I really didn't want to see him this morning because I didn't want to hear about last night. <laughs> Ain't fair to bring preachers to preach in after Jim Rayleigh, but whatever. I'm still, still, whatever. But I didn't want, I didn't want to get a bunch of information because I want to just hear from God. Somewhere before the night's over, Brother Rayleigh will have to buy me a steak, but until then, I didn't want to hear from him or anybody. I just wanted to 
spirit to guide me. When you said nuclear, I about fell out of my seat. I told my wife just last week, what God's doing at our church, New Beginnings, I feel it's nuclear. And when I said, said that to her and even to some of our staff, they got really excited, but it, it gripped me in a different way. Let me explain why. The reason most people are opposed to nuclear power as an energy source is its volatility. So, so it, could, it could as easily light up a town as it could viscerate it. I told my wife, she looked at me, said, honey, listen, don't be afraid. I said, but we have never been so close to our church collapsing as we are right now. That's not a negative statement. It's because it's nuclear. You get one little thing out, you're going to viscerate the entire town. But if you manage this thing well, you will transform a region. Let me tell you something. There is a reason. I'm going to my seat. Let me do this so y'all think I'm being serious. There is a reason that God is doing what he's doing in this house. There's a reason. Yeah, your pastors are wonderful. I told them when I saw them picture on the app, I said, that's a beautiful couple right there. They're beautiful inside and out. Anointed inside and out. Gifted inside and out. But let me tell you something. I'm going to go to my seat. Let me tell you something. I'm overwhelmed with this. The reason God is doing what he's doing here, this is not cliche, please. It's because he can trust you. That's just it. Your heart has cried for it. You've asked for it. But it's because he can trust you. He is looking for glory carriers. He's looking for weight carriers. He's looking for people that know how to manage this nuclear thing called the ark. Because we know if we just, it could kill me just as easily as it could make me alive. But I came to tell you today, God has found this house trustworthy with the oil, trustworthy with the glory. And because of this, you are are about to go nuclear in the name of come on and give them a shout